Looking at this integral, we probably only have a couple of options for u. One would be cosine of z and the other would be sine of z. If we chose cosine of z as our u, then our du is going to be negative sine of z dz. And while there is a sine of z in our integral, it's in the denominator, and our du is always gonna have to be up in the numerator. Also, this is a sine to the fourth, and I don't really know how to deal with that, so I'm guessing this is not going to be the option. If we choose u is sine of z, then our du is going to be cosine of z dz. And then you'll notice that we have a u to the fourth down in our denominator, and this cosine of z dz is just a du up in our numerator. I think that's a pretty good option. I think we can forget about that one. And since we're over here, we may as well right now figure out what's gonna happen to our limits. The limits on this integral go from z equals pi over six to z equals pi over two. When z equals pi over six, that makes u sine of pi over six. Remembering our unit circle, that gives us a lower limit of integration of u equals one half. When z equals pi over two, u equals sine of pi over two. And again, our unit circle tells us that that is one. So when we convert this integral over to all u's, our limits are gonna go from u equals one half half to u equals one. Let's do it. We have the integral of u to the fourth in the denominator with just a regular old du on top and our limits are going from one half to one. Now in this form, you might not be sure how to integrate this. A little mini step of algebra is pretty important here. u to the fourth in the denominator can be brought up to the numerator and called u to the negative fourth. And now it looks like we can just use the power rule for integration. We increase our power by one, that makes this power negative three. We divide by that same negative three. We evaluate between one half and one. Maybe just a little bit more room here. We can rewrite this if we want as one over three u cubed with a negative sign on it, of course and we're going to evaluate that between one half and one. The fundamental theorem of calculus part two says that we plug in our upper limit of integration, we subtract, and we plug in our lower limit of integration. All right, let's see what these fractions turn into. This first term is just giving me negative one third. The minus a negative is gonna give us a plus. If we cube one half, we get one eighth. That's one cubed on top and two cubed on the bottom. That gives us one over three eighths, which is eight thirds. Combine those two fractions and we get seven thirds as our final answer. And okay, I think that worked out pretty well.